we're going to use shells to find the volume of this region that's described. Uh, we take the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 1, and I've drawn that for you here. We've got the parabola y equals x squared, the vertical line x equals 1, and then the x-axis y equals 0. So if you take that and revolve it around this horizontal line, y equals negative 2, on the other side you'll have something like this, and then a three-dimensional picture that fills that in. Now this one you could actually do using washers, and it would probably be easier than what we're going to do now, but I want to use this to illustrate the use of shells, and this one kind of throws a few complications at you, so that if you can handle this one, then the other shell problems will be no problem. So if you think about drawing shells to represent this, remember that with disks and washers, we slice it across the direction of rotation, across that axis that forms the center. With shells, we do it a little bit differently. We slice it parallel to that axis of rotation, and then we build this nested set of shells to form the whole picture. So our shells will look something like this, placed on the side here, and they're rotated around this horizontal line. So the dimensions of this shell, the thickness first of all, will be a delta y, because it's a vertical distance from the inside to the outside. The radius will be using y values as well and we'll get to that in just a second, and then the height, quote unquote, this distance, uh, the length of the shell, which we'll still call the height just to be consistent, will also depend on y. So all of these depend on y, and we have to do a little bit of work to figure out exactly what each of those values will be. First, we need to rewrite these functions as functions of y. Specifically, the parabola is the one we need to worry about. So like we've done before, instead of y equals x squared, we'll write that as x equals the square root of y. Because everything's going to be functions of y, that's important to do. Now let's start with the height. The height of this shell will be the distance between these two curves. The distance between x equals 1 and x equals the square root of y. So if we want to calculate that height, we just need to subtract 1 minus the square root of y. If you can see that, then we can move on to the radius. But that may not be obvious, and you may need to go back and check that again and make sure that you can calculate that height appropriately. Notice the order in which I subtracted them. I did 1 minus the square root of y because 1 is the larger of the two functions because it's further to the right on the region we're interested in. The square root of y is further to the left, so we did kind of like upper minus lower, but in this case the right one minus the left one, larger minus smaller. So that's the height, the difference between the right edge and the left edge. The right edge is just a constant 1, the left edge is defined by that function, the square root of y. So make sure you can follow that, and then once you're ready to move on to the radius, the radius is going to be the distance between the center line which is y equals negative 2, and the outer edge, the outer edge is just going to be the y value. So whenever we cut one of these shells, we have a generic value y that describes its location. And so that's the outer edge, so the radius will be that y value minus negative 2. That too is maybe not intuitive yet, but if you practice with this a few times and look back at the previous example, when we cut a shell, the edge is always going to be either at an arbitrary x value or y value. So we'll just label that either x or y, depending on which way the shell is oriented. And then if you subtract the center line from that, that's the radius. So in the previous example, the center line was just 0, so we had x minus 0, or just x. In this case, we have y minus negative 2, or we can write it as y plus 2. So with a shell problem, 
the hard part is always getting those pieces figured out. If you can figure out the radius and you can figure out the height, you're pretty much done. Uh, but that's the tricky part. So if you need to go over this a few times, you can pause and go back and make sure that those pieces make sense to you. But once you're ready to move forward, the volume for shells is just the integral of 2 pi rh. And of course, with the appropriate limits of integration. In this case, we're doing things with a delta y, so we'll have dy in the integral. We can pull out a 2 pi, and then the radius is y plus 2, and h is 1 minus the square root of y. Now, for limits of integration, we need to look for the y values at the inner and outer edges of this object. In other words, what's the y value at the inside of this rotated object? What's the y value at the outer edge? It should be clear that it starts when y equals 0. And when it finishes, you're up here at the intersection of x squared and 1. So that would be where y equals 1, because where x equals 1 and y equals x squared, the intersection is at the point 1, 1. So the limits of integration are from 0 to 1. Now to carry out this integral, you can expand out this binomial. So you have y plus 2 times 1 minus the square root of y. So that would be y plus 2 minus y times the square root of y minus 2 times the square root of y. And then the easiest thing is to rewrite those all as powers of y. So y plus 2 minus y to the 3 halves minus 2 y to the 1 half. And then you can integrate. And for sake of time, I won't show all the steps there. But the final answer you get should be 23 pi over 15. And I would recommend you go through and make sure you can work that out just to check yourself on the level of detail. But the key to these problems is always the setup. And with this one, with shells, the setup basically boils down to finding the values for r and h. If you can do that reliably, everything else is just a matter of being careful and consistent, and everything else will be okay.